All right, so it's been a little over a year since Betaflight 4.2 was released. And honestly, I thought it was much longer than that. I look back at the dates here and it was June 14th, 2020. I guess we were all really in the lockdown at that point. And it's been a long year. But the anniversary since that date has come and passed. We're coming into the fall, of course, of 2021. And people want to know, when is Betaflight 4.3 going to come out? Well, in this video, we're going to cover some of the new features that you can expect in Betaflight 4.3. And we're also going to try to attempt to cover the topic of when is Betaflight 4.3 going to be released? So last November, I did a video of what's new in Betaflight 4.3. And you can see that if you go out to the, the uavtech.com. And then on the main page, you'll see a Betaflight 4.3 there. And then you can click down, you'll see it right here, that video if you're wanna interested in that. And that covers all the new uh, features that you would expect up until November, 2020 in Betaflight 4.3, or what was being merged into master. So we're not gonna cover that again. If you're interested in the progress made from June until November in Betaflight 4.3, you can check out that video. We're gonna pick up from there and see what else has been added. So as of that video, the last PR that I saw that we left off on was this one right here. And this is actually now on page 12. And there's 25 uh, PRs on each page and PRs are pull requests. So it's people making change to the code and asking the project to pull that into the master uh, branch, which then uh, culminates into a release of Betaflight 4.3. So 25 times, let's say 11, that's 275 pull requests or closures because it's some of these weren't merged that you'll see that have been submitted most of them merged uh but you'll see one it shows a little red that actually means it was just closed so either it didn't get accepted or the you know it went stale or something like that i don't know so that's quite a bit of change or quite a bit of pull requests at least let's uh go down through these and a quick snapshot of what some of the main features are that i see there's a lot of stuff that's uh quote code tweaks and improvements and each one is very valid if any of your people are watching that have submitted pull requests appreciate all the efforts uh, that everybody goes into i'm not going to be able to cover all 275 i'm going to pick out the ones that i see that i think you guys might be interested my audience might be interested in high level view so let's get into it as you're checking this out if you're really aching to get on beta flight 4.3 but you're a little hesitant about flashing a nightly build check out my patreon i have a video on there and I have some uh, hex files I have out there that I've vetted that uh, are safe to flash up. And I go through the complete setup, how you can transition from 4.2 to 4.3 pretty easily. I think we do it in five minutes, not even. And uh, also a little bit more depth on the uh, sliders. But you'll see a little bit more about that in a second. So the first one up is a new linear mixer uh, by the man himself, Boris B, the creator, original creator of Betaflight. Uh, he's the one that forked it from Clean Flight. And the linear mixer was uh, brought over actually from uh, Emu Flight. So a little collaboration back and forth there, uh, inspired uh, by this user. Uh, and uh, you can see some of the fancy graphs. I don't know if it, you know, you'd have to check it out to see if you like it or not. But uh, this is how the old mixer kind of worked when throttle or PID sum. So the PID sum is basically from zero to one, what it's commanding the motor from 0% throttle to 100% throttle, and then over a throttle range. So you can see um, just how it, this is a little, it's not as smooth as it could be, depending on what throttle you're at, I guess. And then what, uh, what the command on the mixer is uh and i guess the anticipated thrust so you got a three axis kind of graph throttle pid sum anticipated thrust so uh anyways you can pick uh, different mixer amounts here so you have uh the classic i believe this is probably the default yet and then uh, you can also check out uh, set mixer to linear and then you can also set mixer to dynamic and see what you think and this one, Tony Cake added the ability to log CRC errors, also known as LQ and RSSI for the Ghost protocol. This one is a bug fix for if you're using race fright rates in Betaflight. Looks like there was an issue previously where the max rate, uh, it was a case statement and was using the max rate logic from the Betaflight rates. Uh, so now it should work and uh, race flight rate values range up to 250 instead of 
uh, just having a max of 100. So there you go. If you use race flight and race flight rates on uh, beta flight 4.3, it should uh, work a little bit better for you than uh, beta flight 4.2. This one's an ad. So if you're having trouble reading your OSD for analog, and you want it to have a solid background, you can now set a solid background instead of having transparent. And then if like in the weeds or it's looking up in the sky, sometimes it's hard to see the text. Uh, so yeah, you can set a solid background. It looks something like uh, down here, like this, where you can set some sort of solid background, make it a little easier for you to read while you're in the OSD. Another handy OSD ad is just these little arrows. So you know that there's more content down page or up page. Uh, again, here that gray background, uh, if you want that as an option as well to make it a little simpler. That was the last PR, uh, but this one was just adding a little arrow. So this is very cool if you want to have Expo when you're in angle mode. So for whoops, uh, not a lot of people know that your rates aren't used when you're in angle mode. It is just a linear differential. But if you wanted to have a little bit of Expo for a little bit of more smoothness in the stick, check out these two CLI variables in three point or in beta flight 4.3. This is a big one. At least I think it's a big one is the DMA ad by Steve Evans for F4, F7 and H7 boards so that your PID loop cycle is no longer waiting for black box read and writes, meaning that your black box loop rate does not affect your PID loop with adding jitter or anything like that. In the past, when you really cranked up your black box uh, recording rate from like one kilohertz to two kilohertz logging rate, or maybe four or eight, you try those higher ones just to see every piece of data uh, from the, as the PID loop's going through, that would actually impact the PID loop. So um, yeah, with DMA, it no longer does that. Uh, it lets it write off and the pit loop keeps cycling around. It's whatever, 4,000 or 8,000 times per second. So big thanks to Steve on this one. This is some really low level stuff that not everybody uh, has under their belt. And uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty big. This one's interesting. This is basically splitting out. So DJI can provide the warnings the proper way instead of the hacks uh, that kind of been done um, on other firmware to try to get it to work immediately. But this split it out separately so DJI can uh, attach on to port in basically the warnings on a proper MSP channel or MSP uh, bit of variable there. So apparently it's on DJR's radar and uh, balls in their court uh, to get this added in. It would just be a firmware update from DJI. So fingers crossed. Another big one here is the multiple dynamic notch. So the dynamic notch has been completely rewritten to some extent uh, with the targeting is higher resolution and also ultimately it can target up to five notches now or five peaks and add five notches onto those independent peaks. Um, so higher resolution uh, can target five peaks instead of one and uh, it's faster, it runs up, op uh, operates faster. So it uses a sliding discrete Fourier transform now, not just a fast Fourier transform. So a big thanks to Jan on this one. And uh, you, but you probably already know about this one because it was a pretty big ad and uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of word was out about it. So this would not replace RPM filtering. It would come in alongside of it. Obviously some quads don't run RPM filtering at all. So this would be improvement to the dynamic notch, uh, but coming in alongside the dynamic notch or the RPM filters, uh, you can detect multiple peaks uh, and obviously it's higher resolution for getting the notches right on to the, the peaks of noise. Uh, you can see the higher resolution here versus the old 16-bin. Uh, now you have with the 50-bin, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, definitely an improvement. So this one's pretty cool if you have Crossfire. It's actually a new OSD element that allows you to see the uplink power. So if you have your radio set at 25, 100, 500, whatever TBS supports, uh, all the way up to you know one or two, yeah, one or two watts, then uh, yeah, you could have an OSD element that displays that along with your LQ and all that kind of good stuff. This is a new filter type for RC smoothing. It's a PT2 and PT3. Uh, it should have PT3, I believe is default there now, and it takes out bi-quad. So PT3 is essentially three PT1 filters in series. Uh, it'd be, um, I don't know if you'd call it a second or a third order. It's a PT3 is about equivalent to a bi-quad. They're not exactly the same. They're different, uh, different, just a little bit different about the uh, same filter tendency. So if you see a PT3, Think of a bi-quad or about the same amount of filtering. Actually, a PT3 is a little bit less because there's uh, there's some bad things with bi-quad filters that can occur 
around the cutoff frequency and stuff. Anyways, without getting all the details, uh, that's what this PR is adding. So if you're seeing RC smoothing in there and you see the PT3, that's where this is coming from. You can read up a little bit more about it here. And also uh, there's another PR that uh, I think we'll hit on here in a second that uh, adds PT3 to filter options uh, in the filters tab. Crossfire V3 support has been added. So it's been in there for a while now, since May. So yeah, V3 is here and in Betaflight 4.3. The new default now for Betaflight 4.3 will be actual rates, not Betaflight rates anymore. So do keep that in mind if you are copying across stuff like the kind of default thing from old and into the new, and uh, you gotta be careful with the rates. Don't bring your rates over uh, if you're using Betaflight rates. Uh, or if you do go into the and just check your rates to make sure they're okay uh, because they're they're not the settings aren't one to one uh, for beta flight rates versus actual rates i think this will definitely be better i use actual rates if you haven't used them yet get on actual rates they're on 4.2 already they're much better than the beta flight rates and here's the pr that adds pt3 filter options 2 and 3 to the filters tab and you can see some of the stuff in here is a good PR to check out some of the bad behaviors that you get with a bi-quad filter, a little bit of overshooting. In this one, Tony Cake is adding support for GPS telemetry uh, for the Ghost protocol. This one's another big one of, uh, from Jan where it is the crossfade. So when multiple notches stack up on top of each other, it actually fades some of them out because any single notch will kill all the noise right at the center frequency. So you don't need, you know, if you have three or four stacking up on top of each other, like if you're at zero throttle with RPM filter, it will fade out all of them except for the one. And then once they start to move back, it will bring them back into play. You can't just shut them off, just how filters work. You get a ripple effect, um, but it fades them out. And I'll be talking more about that uh, on some Patreon only posts about why you just can't shut filters off. So if you're interested in that, uh, do sign up. Here we are adding feed forward into level horizon modes. Uh, in the past, again, feed forward was not a thing in angle or horizon. So your rates didn't matter and feed forward didn't matter when you're in angle or horizon mode. But uh, now your, your rates still don't matter, but you can add expo in and then you can adjust the uh, angle strength for how quick things move. Uh, think of it like a rubber band. You want a strong rubber band or a weak rubber band so you can adjust that angle strength. You can add an expo now in 4.3 and then also your feed forward will uh, come into play as well if you want to have a little bit of a boost when you make a uh, fast stick move. Of course, just like always with feed forward, if you make small stick moves, feed forward doesn't really boost at all. So it's really the perfect uh, kind of approach for this kind of stuff. Fast stick moves, you get a boost. Slow stick moves, feed forward really doesn't do anything at all. So this is a nice one. So those that don't know to turn off the ADC filter in your OpenCX radios, uh, some improvements uh, made on this to uh, try to compensate for some of the badness that occurs with the ADC filter being turned on. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I'd still recommend turning your ADC filter off. Nevertheless, there's some improvements in 4.3 that if you have, still have it on, um, will mitigate some of the, the badness that comes along with it. This is nice if uh, you run a timer show, it, it will show you end channel timers now. So if you are having some issues for some reason on your quad or micro and you can't get bi-directional D shot uh, working for you, um, then you can do this timer show and see if you have end channel timers uh, assigned to any of the motors. Of course, I would be remiss without covering some configurator changes. So the first thing here is the auto detect button just on the flashing page to detect what target automatically uh, you need to select here and just click this button and should figure out your target and then you can either load firmware online. The next thing you'll notice right away in here in the configuration tab is there is a lot less stuff. So things have been broken out to be appropriate to what they are. So receiver stuff is under the receivers tab. Motor stuff is under the motors tab instead of everything kind of jumbled into the configuration tab uh, here. So you can see configuration broken down to just a core couple things. And, uh, you know, a lot of the buzzer stuff is most of it. We'll come back to the PID tuning tab here in a second, but you can see the receiver setup is under receiver. So you can actually see uh, as you're setting this stuff up, if things are starting to move around and then all of your course, all of your filter options over here. Motors tab now has all your D shot setup stuff for bi-directional turning that on and off. And as we covered before that will turn on and off your RPM filters now. 
And of course, if you need to reorder your motor down here, you can do that for motor mapping or change motor direction without going into BL Heli S or BL Heli 32. You can do that now here right through the configurator, just like flight one. We caught up on that regard. Yay. The OSD tab has, of course, some new options and items here. So you can check that out. That's pretty neat. And then uh, again, you can have some new options here. All very cool stuff and new new things, uh, uplink power and all that kind of stuff that we talked about from the beta flight side. And I'm probably missing some additional stuff in here as well. So with canvas mode coming uh, in Sharkbite and I think DJI, I think that's kind of on its way. I think I've heard something, maybe, maybe I'm wishful thinking. Uh, all of this comes kind of back into play uh, because now all these great OSD elements, uh, you'll be able to use NC. And finally, the PID tab. So in the PID tuning tab, you're going to see new sliders. And I'm gonna do a Patreon only video and offer up some stuff to flash up if people wanna get on a tested version of Blade of Flight 4.3. Uh, so if you're interested in that, a little bit more details on the new sliders coming and then some hex files that I've tested out uh, to know that they're safe for flight for 4.3 if you wanna get on it now. Uh, again, sign up to the link down on Patreon and look for that video, uh, which should be posted already. But we have a bunch of new sliders here uh, and some here in you know, non-expert mode, keeping it simple. In expert mode, have some more flexibility. And trust me, these sliders are gonna work great. Uh, be a lot more flexible than your have in beta flight 4.2 and ultimately we're looking to add presets so before 4.3 comes out uh, i believe presets will be worked on to finalize the presets will be set so that they adjust those sliders and then you can use the sliders and the amazing tool tips that go along with the sliders that somebody helped write but uh, that hopefully can guide you through after you load a preset and you're still having maybe some tweaks because again, presets are just glorified defaults that uh, those sliders with the more common names can help you navigate how you can tweak it out to perfection uh, since the preset will kind of get you most of the way there. And then if you want a little bit better tracking, you move up the tracking slider. If you want a little bit less wobble, you move down the drift wobble slider, stuff like that. So ultimately to answer the question at the end of this long video of when is beta flight 4.3 going to be released? And the answer is, I don't actually know for hundred percent. We got to get the sliders finished up. We got to get the presets finished up testing. And ultimately it comes down to when Mike Keller wants to have the release candidates issued out there when he has some time, you know, Mike has a lot of things going on, just like all the devs. It's not their full-time job to be doing this stuff. So they have families, uh, jobs, other responsibilities, and uh, things are coming together. But it's been about a year, a uh, year and a couple months uh, since the last stable release. Uh, again, if you're really aching to get on Betaflight 4.3, you can always flash a nightly build. If you're interested in something a little bit more vetted, again, sign up to the Patreon and uh, we'll check out that video on that and some of the uh, hexes that I can distribute that I've tested and know are in good order. Thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed this update on what's new in Betaflight 4.3 since the last what's new video in uh, November of 2020. Happy flying and we'll see you on the next one.